What was it, do you think, that, that particularly appealed to you in this music as a performer? Well, uh, apart from the, the fact that his imagination seemed to be at full stretch most of the time, I mean, he hardly ever busks his way th mm. through something easy in, it, as a composer. You know, he's always stretching his ideas. It, it is so imaginative. There are so many different textures, and his use of the piano is quite exceptionally interesting. I mean, he gives a lot of material to the left hand, for instance. Crucial stuff. Most composers in that period didn't do that. They, the left hand accompanied the right. Mm. But Haydn uses the left hand to develop the ideas. Uh, he would also experiment with textures, like both hands are in the treble clef for a long time. Both then move down to the bass clef for a page. You know, that sort of thing. Really imaginative treatment so his mind was was working flat out all the time and the tunes are great and he derives so much material from just one or two little ideas uh, which he then transforms as a sonata goes along so that the whole piece is very much one of a piece even though all the tunes sound as if they're different but cumulatively, I wonder if there's a sort of parallel in your response to Nielsen's music beyond the the extraordinarily inventive musicality that one's very conscious of in listening to, to both Nielsen's and Haydn's music. There is something comes through of the humanity of mm. these composers, I think, and that seems to me something that you respond to in music generally. Yeah, I think it is. Yes, definitely. Yes, I mean... I. I don't know what else to say to that, because I think that's perfectly true. But uh, I've always got this feeling, for instance, writing ballets, I've got to feel that I know the characters as people and relate them to people I know. Um, and similarly, listening to, to composers, like the composers who you, uh, are really uh, dear to me, I think that I know them as people. 